Okay, this sermon is entitled, Walking by Flesh, Faith, or Spirit. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 83 reads, Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Now, when it comes to false prophets, these people are completely incompetent in realizing that there's a polar distinction between salvation and the Christian walk. The unsaved lordshippers out there, they just lump everything together, making discipleship and salvation one and the same. But yet there are these false gracers out there who do the exact same thing. And they don't seem to understand the difference between eternal life being a free gift and Christian service. So I'd like to go ahead and make it clear that salvation is 100% by grace. It's based on what Jesus Christ did for us when he died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose again. Eternal life is a free gift offered to every single person equally, and it's received simply by believing on Jesus Christ for it, a.k.a. faith alone in Christ alone. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So once you receive salvation, you are eternally secure, you can never be lost ever again, and... You are a child of God who is 100% heaven-bound. But see, after a person is saved, they are given the choice to serve God or not. And when it comes to serving God, this has to do with the Christian walk. Now, there are three options. You can either walk by the flesh, by faith, or by the Spirit. So let's take a look at some verses that talk about this. Turn over to Galatians chapter 5. Now, anytime a person is walking after the flesh, they are destined to to inevitably fail. And the Christian walk cannot be done in the flesh. We see this in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. It reads, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what we get from this by contradistinction is that if we walk after the flesh and not the Spirit, then we will fulfill the lust of the flesh. And this explains why these unsaved devils, a lot of which who preach on the streets, cannot produce the true gospel. Because they live in the flesh and do not possess the Holy Spirit, which in turn means that they are forced to walk after the flesh, they can only preach a false gospel like repent of your sins, or obey the commandments to be saved, or persevere to the end. And this also explains why these people cannot get the atonement correct. They'll claim that Jesus Christ only died for his own. He didn't die for the sins of the whole world. And that would be Calvinism. Now, if these people were actually saved and they had the Holy Spirit, they could therefore walk after the Spirit, and that would enable them to preach the true gospel, which is salvation by grace alone, through faith alone in Christ alone, and also eternal security. So, if we walk after the flesh, we will ineluctably fail and, of course, fall back into sin. So now, what do I mean by walking by faith? Well, the Bible teaches walking by faith, but it's not the same thing as these stupid frauds are teaching. They're known as the hyper-gracers. These people have this corny epigram that they like to throw out, and that is, we walk by faith or we live by faith. Now, before I get into what they mean by this, let me explain just how these people operate. They have no biblical arguments to support their false teaching, so they make one false accusation after another. They'll claim that if you're encouraging Christian service to somebody who willingly wants to serve God, that you're putting people back under the law, telling them they need to earn grace or earn God's favor, and teaching people that God is mad at them. And these are some of the dumbest, most pathetic false accusations I've ever heard. No one is telling anyone that they need to earn God's favor and that God is mad at them. This is nothing but a straw man, an absolute lie, a total false accusation, and an expression of utter desperation by these stupid frauds who wouldn't know the Bible from a mad magazine. And these people, in attempt to cover up their stupid lies 
and foolish garbage will tell you that you need to walk by faith. And they never specify or elucidate as to what that means. And essentially what it means is basically just do nothing and then call it walking by faith. And it literally cannot mean anything else. Because let's just say somebody were to preach by faith. They would just be accused by these same phonies of being back under the law. So obviously walking after the flesh and then walking by faith the way these frauds define it lead to basically nothing. Now, the Bible tells us that we need to walk after the Spirit. Turn to Galatians chapter 5, and let's take a look at verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, the Apostle Paul is affirming that these people do live in the Spirit. They have the Holy Spirit indwelling them. He's saying, because of this, you should walk in the Spirit. And this is how it's done. Number one, walking after the Spirit means you have full assurance of your salvation. You are resting in what Jesus Christ accomplished at the cross 100%. Walking after the Spirit allows us to renew our minds by the gospel message. That's what it truly means to walk by faith. And then it also includes preaching the gospel to other people. Because we're walking after the Spirit, we can give the clear gospel. We can tell others that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. He was buried and rose again. And that eternal life is a free gift. And that we're saved 100% by grace through faith alone in Christ alone plus nothing. So when it comes to the Christian walk, you can either walk after the flesh and fail, walk by faith in accordance with this stupid platitude and also fail, or you can do what the Apostle Paul said and walk after the Spirit. It has nothing to do with salvation. It's totally optional and it should only be done out of complete willingness. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen.